this is the story of my life. Now, I may not have had the most interesting life in the world. I mean, I wasn't a movie star, and I wasn't a rock singer, although I was there when, uh, when Bob Dylan got started at a little club in uh, Greenwich Village in New York City. But the one thing I have that uh, at least used to be distinctive, the fact that uh, I spent seven months in a, in a hospital. Uh, at the time, uh, they didn't know what bipolar was, but <laughs> I'm, I'm a bipolar who's been around for a while. And I take my meds, and, you know, I can explain things to you. I was always adventurous. My parents were in their 40s and 50s when I was born. So now, now that I'm 72, I'm a little in my parents' world, but of course they died years and years ago. My dad was uh, well respected in the community. Perhaps they thought he was a little odd because of his uh, very conservative religious views. Didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't go to poopies. Ah, well, that all started after the death of his first wife. And, uh, but by the time I came along, as far as I knew, that's the way it always been. And, uh, his parents came from Germany. He came to the States as a as a small child, and he had uh, that typical German desire to control everything, including the lives of his children. Well, we crossed swords on that. I'm not the first person who wanted to kill his father. I'm like most people who felt that way during their uh, mature years. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. But I was lying there in bed, and in the house with my parents in the other room, and the, uh, the urge came on me, and at the time I was, you know, a little on the doo-doo-doo, la-la land, dreams, whatever, dream world. I knew where a nice, sharp pair of scissors were, and I pictured myself going into the room and stabbing it. Now, that was the end of my urge. Uh, like most impulsive things, once that was done, what would I do? You know, you're with impulse, you're not thinking about what comes next. But anyhow, I lay in my bed. Very still. I mean, I didn't, I didn't move a little finger. I learned how to do that. I was like 26 at the time, living at home between jobs, and eventually fell asleep and woke up in the morning. And uh, said to my parents, you know, I think I need my mind is. God, I need some help. So they sent me to the local doctor and he gave me some Thorazine, which never worked very well. And I went to an outpatient clinic and that just stirred up my emotions more. So we hopped in the car and my dad and I rode up to the mental hospital. Now they always thought it was a mistake. I tell it wasn't a mistake. But there, I'm getting ahead of a story, so you don't have to uh, pardon me, because when you're 72, when your mind kind of skips over the past, you know, you think here, you think here, and uh, things, you don't remember everything in chronological order, like you would if you were, uh, would arrange if you were writing a novel. I've written many novels. <laughs> I'm a failed novelist. 
but that's not a big sorrow in my life. Writing them was a joy. Editing them, reversing them was a joy. Who knows, right? If, there, if nothing is ever, a bite is ever published, short story or novel, why, that's not going to impact my uh, happiness one way or another. The thrill comes in creating on paper a time from the past, making it come alive. And I used my life as a model for the material I wrote to a certain extent. Uh, I remember when a, uh, one of my college buzzy buddies visited me when I was uh, living in a New Jersey suburb, working in aerospace. He came for the uh, week between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, the little town I lived in was just a sh short trade ride away from Manhattan. And we spent uh, our car drive, and we spent almost all our time in Manhattan. We went to Rockefeller Center, and we went to a, a church and saw a medieval uh, play, and we went to Greenwich Village to the little folk music club I went to, and uh, went to the art galleries. Uh, he was uh, an art teacher into the arts. He, had, he taught me about it. And we were very good friends. But uh, on that particular occasion, for one reason or another, who knows, we were doing a lot of arguing. You know, poop, 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 poop. And uh, so when I saw him off on the bus, well, we, we remained friends for many years thereafter. But I went home and I started, I was living in a rooming house. And I started, sat down at my little table. I had a little portable typewriter. And I started typing this story. But I would type at night. And then I'd go for long walks, come back, and think about it. When it was all done, I let it set for a few days and read it over. And I can remember uh, uh, skipping down the stairs of that old ruby house with uh, Mrs. A, the, uh, <laughs> the house mother, whatever you want to call it, and uh, neighbor, one of the men was, had a rifle and the other one was what, a son of a, a wealthy uh, business owner, kind of incognito. And it was a strange place, but I remember skipping down the stairs thinking, I did it, I did it, I caught it. I caught those bullets, and uh, I said it here and there, and nobody else <laughs> realized the great significance of it. But uh, that's the joy of writing.